Hello, all you are calls out there. How are you doing? It's Russ here from Porky's Corner, the biggest gob in sport. Today, I'm joined by Kent. Women loving is it? Women loving men. How are you doing, Kent? How's it going, Russell? You keeping all right? I'm all right. How are you? Good. I'm all good. How's uh, how's boxing treating you, Ken? Lately, you still in love with sport or? Kind of prob probably a bit like yourself. It it's. Well, I mean, it. You get subdued by it, you know. You get submerged by it, and you get frustrated by it. You you can see something of brilliance, you know. It just erratic. It's like it's like a love hate thing with me at the minute boxing. Right. Uh, well, right, then we'll go balls deep on this one today. Then Dave Allen. I've we've all seen his interview the last few days. Starting to look like he's getting a bit of a chiselled face on him, big old beard and all that. Does a leopard change his spots, yes or no? No. Alan, no. since Dave Allen beat Lucas Brown, is it about seven years? Too long. Too long, right? I don't know how long it is exactly, but it's a long time ago, right? So that was basically his best win, won it, of his career. He's done notes since then, has he? Right. What uh, do we think happens with a Dave Allen? Does he fight Johnny Fisher and get filled in, or does he turn up and do Johnny Fisher? Yes or no? No. 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 He can just text the payday. It doesn't matter what shape he, he turns up in. You know, we we heard this for. I, I got I fell into this trap last year. You fell into it. Richard was completely against it, and we were like, "Big Richard, yeah, yeah, big Richard." You know, he he was the only one on the channel that was like, "You know what? I don't even want to talk about him. I don't want to see him fighting." Next subject. That that's that's the way Richard was about it, and he was right. We we seen all these pictures from training in the gym. He was lifting weights and losing all this weight and running a hundred mile a week and. That's an exaggeration, by the way. I'm being, I'm, I'm being really sarcastic. If you don't know, and he turned up against Fraser Clark, and and I'll say it was absolutely dreadful. Going out in his ass after sixty seconds, wasn't he? At I'll say Russell that that fight was abysmal. I mean, abysmal. And do you think Fraser is not putting the effort in? Do you think? He's just turning up to take the money because they don't have to make weight with these heavyweights. And it's always heavyweights that get caught out with the fitness in it than any other weight. Have you noticed that? He's got that wee bit of name brand value. There's a wee bit of value to his name. And that's what he that that's what gets him through. That's what gets him the fight. That's what gets him the, the, the opportunity. Namely, he's in the ring. Mm. He's actually cute enough and crafty enough the bluff his way through getting without getting hiding. Yeah. And that fight was dreadful. He looked abysmal shape. He looked terrible. And I will tell you, you, you would have, if you would have spent money to go and watch him in that fight, you'd have been saying, Dave, give me the money back. That that was he was looking a way out after the second round with the low blows. Yeah. You know, we had just had we just had uh, Dubois Usyk. So that topic of low blows was fresh in everyone's mind. And the low blows started borderline shots. And for me, I thought he was looking looking a way out. He was he was he was holding his face. He was holding his 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 uh his belly button at the time. You know, it was just he was just looking away at that fight. And a Fraser Clark actually had killer instinct and and was a big punching monster. He would have been out of there in a round. I thought it's big freeze got robbed against Wardler, did you? I, I thought I, I, I did say on the channel that I thought the fight could have went either way. I actually thought Clark deserved it. To be fair, I wouldn't say it was a robbery. I don't. I wouldn't say a fight that close would would be would warrant, you know, branded. A robbery, but it was was a very very close fight. Uh, Clark's conditioning, 
obviously was was much better than than Ward Lee's. He had that wee bit more now no high. He held his shape a lot better. His tactic technique was a lot better. I I thought he won that fight. Yeah. Uh, so if Dave don't fight Fisher next, who's he fight? Who cares? I'll say he. I seen some post on Facebook last week that he's on one of Dennis Hobson's shows. Who cares? Who, who who's going to be? It's it, it's not that who he fights. That's not the question. It's who does he beat? Well, let's have a look here on this show here. They've got Max on Big Ron, Big Ron's show, aren't they? Next week, isn't it? Have a look here. Well, this is it's a nightmare, this. It's not even rigged up, this phone. Hang on a minute. It's not even rigged up to uh, internet, I don't think. No. Oh, Max. Let's have a look. Max. Max Jenkins. Box rack. See if I can get through on this. Max, two and one. You see, you see where I'm coming from? Max has been took off it. See, it's Max. You see what I said to you? I said to Max, I said, Max, Dennis is just paying your lip service. No, I'm on Dennis's next show. I'm on Dennis's next show. Well, you're not, are you? But Dave Allen's on it. See where I'm coming from? Oh, it's this Saturday, isn't it? Big Ron's show. Dave Allen out first against Amini Bucetta. I mean, who, who is that? So they've got Dave Allen fighting a guy, right? Ranked 562. Jesus. So Dave's in with a guy ranked 562. Then we've got Josh Wish Josh Wisher in with a guy at 579. Then we've got Mikey Harrison in with a guy at 845. These are rankings that are way opponents. Then we've got Katie Ealy in with a girl ranked 102, which sounds brilliant, doesn't it? 102. But there's only under under and odd in the in the division. Do you know what I mean? About 185 people in the division. Do you know what I mean? Uh, then we've got Anise Tay against Ryan Laybourne, ranked 722. Then we've got Mason Dickinson, 668, own fighter against the guy 1,404, Dale Arrowsmith. Dale Arrowsmith, by the way. Well, like the bane of my existence when I used to work there because all Dennis would say, eh, get Dale Arrowsmith in. I said, Dale Arrowsmith. Well, let me just tell you about Dale Arrowsmith, shall I? And the British Boxing Board of Controls rules. Years ago, I remember speaking to Clinton Woods about this. And Clinton said to me, Glyn Rhodes will tell you this, back in the day, if you had five losses as a journeyman, you were all, all up in front of area council. Am I right? And they say, why have you yeah. got five losses on trot, yeah? Well, let me just tell you about Dale Arrowsmith. Dale Arrowsmith is a nice enough kid, 29-year-old. He's 29, and he's had 119 fights. 119 fights, and he's 29-year-old. He's got a big house, got a job in the day, gets a few quid. He's an active journeyman, yeah? Right. Out of them 108 defeats, he's only been stopped seven times. So he'll he's one of them guys. He'll get stopped every 15 round. Every 15 fights, Kent, he gets stopped. But he's there to give people rounds. If you've lost 108, if you've lost 108 times and you've had 119 fights, and at that 119 fights, you've lost 108 times. You're a fucking serial loser, aren't you? 
Am I right? So how is he getting work? I ain't not against anybody getting work. But if he's just turning up to lose, what's the point? What is the point? That's how I look at it. So we've got... That's a dreadful card. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, you know what I mean? That's what we're up against, mate. That's what we're up against. But it is what it is, isn't it? Would you pay to watch that if your best mate was on that card? Uh, no one. So we've got Dale would... Aversmith, ranked 1,400. Then we've got Billy Pickles, ranked 520. Oh, Chris Medley's fighter. Uh, I forgot his name now. We sponsored him. Uh, me and Kevin. Quinn Ahmed. Quinn Ahmed. You know what Porky's called in dressing on the shorts? Quinn. Nice from kids, only 20. Quinn went over there and sparred him and knocked him about. He was 10 and 0 then, Billy Pickles. Billy Pickles is now 15 and 1. He got beat a few a few months ago. But point I want to make is everybody he's ever had a win against has had a losing has had a losing record. Five and twenty seven, eight and forty four. Oh, he's got a win here over a guy twelve and four. Who ended up a dosser anyway. You know what I mean? But point I want to make is Quinn went through then, put hands on him. He's fight, he's headlining against the Keenan Wainwright, Dennis Dennis's other fighter, Billy Pickles. Now Keenan should do him, in my opinion. He should, he should beat Billy Pickles. If he don't, you got a problem there. But he should do him, Keenan. He's a big puncher. But you know, are you telling me that's that's that that is probably Dennis's best show that he's put on in a couple of years now. But are you telling me boxing's boom when you've got a show like that? Hey. He would he would want to pay to go and see that. All right, well let's just have let's just add it up. Let's just add it up. The away fighters, 5, 10, 15, 18, 19, 26, 26, 39, 40, 43, 40. So you've got like 4,900 divided by 2467. 4,900, about seven sevens of 49. So each one of them is rank, averaging, ranking about 700, Kent. So the away opponents rank, let's see what the box rate ranking of the show is. See what I mean? They're not even getting it a ranking. Dennis, that's how bad your shows have got, Dennis. You're not even getting a box rate star. See where I'm coming from. If your Bobby. opponents for a show in Sheffield, let's let's get this right here. I'm not hammering Dennis because I don't speak to him no more because he'll he'll always be in it back then. He could come here tomorrow and I'd have a couple of him. But let me just say this. If that's the best that Dennis can put on, right? A box rec average for opponents of about 700 ranking. Is that the best that he can serve up? And, he, and, and you've got Adam Smith around uh, saying boxing's booming. You'll go on that GMB to keep all going on about Izzy, don't they? You know, them next door. Oh, Ashes, mate, and all that lot. People keep going on about it. He's got Daz's own dates and whatever. That's all very well. Go and look at the average of the opponents, that he, the fighters that he's putting on the shows, that he's putting in with the own guys. It's just as bad. You see where I'm coming from? So don't tell me, you weirdos, about matchmaking. All right, I did it for another six years. You can't tell me no about box wreck and matching. I know should go with you. If your opponents on a show, all you promoters out there, have got an average of about 680 to 700 ranking, it's shite, utter shite. But nobody's going to say a word because boxing's booming because Bean says it, doesn't he? It's garbage. That what that is is serving up is garbage, but nobody's going to say a word. Am I out of turn saying that? Because I went there as a VIP as their guest. No, I don't care. I didn't even want to go. I went to keep peace because the next door and I like Ash. What are you two shits about that show? You were on it, so I went. The actual show were garbage, mate. This is what Dennis is serving up is garbage. But nobody's going to say it. They're going to say. Boxing's booming and it's great that they're getting stuff out there because they've been starved, haven't we? It's shite, utter shite. Look at it, Kent. I'll send you a screenshot. I'll send you a screenshot, Kent. And you you have a look at that now on your phone. All right. I'll email I'm gonna email you that now. So I've got no number on here. Right, I've emailed you that, Kent. Right? Have a look at that. Let me know what you think. 
Have a look tomorrow, Kent, because we've just gone through it all now, haven't we? But the point I want to make is the box rank rankings of the opponents. Nobody mentions it, do they? You go look at Ben Shallum's oppo opponents that they're putting on these Sky shows and they're wheeling out Oscott Nelson to big it all up. It's garbage. Look what Eddie's serving up in America. Boxing's took a turn for worse. I'm a statistics man. I look at all these things and I like to look at graphs and what climbs up and what goes down and that. The quality control of these shows is absolutely shocking. Just Google it and have a look. Absolutely shocking, Kent. That's what I think. Am I being harsh? If I am, who's going to stop me anyway? Who can stop me saying what I want to say on here? Nobody can stop me. Or if they want to come and get stuck into me, they'll see what happens. That's how I feel about boxing at the moment, Kent. Well, who's going, to, who's going to get stuck into me in boxing? I'll get stuck back into them. I'm really bothered about all these so-called hard men in boxing. They're not hard men when they see me. They'll just say hello. They're all going to do some good gunners. Boxing's full of good gunners. Till I breeze up at a show. They don't say no to me. Because I tell the truth, what they're going to do, attack me for saying that this is not good enough. Do you know, years ago, Border have said, hey, you're not going to sign off on all that lot, Dennis. We're your matchmaker, are you? And Dennis would have gone, oh, uh, let's have a look. Are you all right there, Kent? Is there somebody else in the room or something? No. There's a fly on the ceiling. <laughs> no, I just think that's garbage, and I think that it's cross-board now. Am I being harsh? Uh, I give well, a the, 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 num the numbers don't lie there. Ken, I've just sent you that screenshot there to your email, right? You've got guys ranked 1,400 with 108 losses out of 119 fights. The guy's a serial loser. He's turning up to fucking lose. He's lost 108 times out of 119 fights. If he was a re if he were respraying cars, he'd done 119 resprays, and he messed up 108, he'd be battered. He'd get no work. He'd get sacked. You're not a boxer, Dale Arrowsmith. You're not a boxer. You're turning up to fucking lose. So that's the truth, isn't it? And I can see these guys because I've been around and they turn up. And I'm looking at the home guy who's shitting his pants because he's fighting a guy that's turning up to lose. Not going to throw any punches. Get on his bike and all that. You know what I mean, don't you? You know what goes on, don't you? They're there to give him round. It's bullshit. Absolute bullshit. He needs stopping. There's too many of these fights going on. In fact, I'm not even surprised some of these out there that are 13 and 0, 12 and 0, haven't wheeled him out to get another win. You know what I mean? You see where I'm coming from, don't you? Because if you go down Dale Harris Smith's box wreck, you'll see that people with undefeated records are still wheeling him out. Still wheeling him out and probably paying him to get on show just to get a win. Buying wins. It's got to stop. You heard what Dave Allen said in that interview the other day, didn't you? He's having to pay to fight. You see it, you heard it, didn't you? I was saying that seven years ago on Ecamp when I started. Am I right? And everybody yep. said I was full of shit, didn't they? I said, yeah, I'm pissed off with it. People are paying to fight. And it's going on across the board, you know. They're all at it. All of them. And this is why we're, we're, this is why it's in a mess now, isn't it? The small all scene's done now, isn't it? Have you seen it? They're Don. scraping it by the barrel, aren't they? They're scraping Don. it by the barrel, mate. The small horse. None of them can put a good... How many of that lot who have got the, the promoter's licences, Kent, are putting on some half decent? I mean, half decent. Not this shite we're getting. Let's just say who's putting out half decent on. Maybe Carl Greaves. Maybe. At a touch. Maybe. None, none of others. Yeah, Phil Jeffries is packed in, hasn't he? Who's putting out one that's small or that's any good? Where's small or shows in the UK? They're all parked up waiting for Queensbury and Matchroom to ring and say, Do you want a slot here at Saudi? That's what's going on. And it's in front of our eyes, mate. And nobody's saying a fucking word. Why aren't these YouTubers like Puppy Parsons, Coogan, and Rob Tebbett, and all, all the rest of these liquors? Why are they not putting it on these? the establishment and saying here why are we having to put up with this lot for lower lower entry boxing shows you know where people who can't afford to go to a big show in London 
with travel and hotel and expense and 10 quid a pint, 20 quid a pizza, all that shit. Why aren't they putting it on the, the big hitter promoters and the boxing board of control? I mean, how is Robert Smith even signing off on some of these matchups on Dennis's show here? You've just seen Sharp, haven't you? It, right. Guys, 14, rank 1400. We under and eight losses out, under and eight, out and under 19 fights, spread over donkey's years. Why are they signing off on that? Why is he still getting wheeled out? There's people with worse CVs than him still making an handsome living. Getting wheeled out, doing a move around, not getting it, dodging everything, and jumping out ring, taking the money and going. They're not even there to try. It's not good, Ken. I don't think you. I wouldn't pay to see it. Well, I ain't gonna. Dennis, you used to go up mad on a Monday and say, oh, how come you're not saying anything about this show on your channel, Russell, that show on your channel? Look at the state of that. Well, Dennis, look at the state of what you're serving up. Look at the state of what you're going to serve up on. on, on it's the 13th. It's Saturday, isn't it? On Saturday. Dennis, you've lost it, mate. If you think you're going to do well with that show, totally fucking embarrassing. You, you're not even involved. Dennis, don't you tell people I know or my mates that you're a boxing promoter. That is utter fucking garbage what you've served up. Absolute garbage. Your worst one ever, your worst ever average ranking, Dennis, for opponents out of all them shows you've had over years. I'll tell you how many. I think it's had over 150 shows. Embarrassing. Anyway, we'll, we'll change subject now, shall we? Uh I want to talk about uh, Johnny Horscott. He's been sticking it to Ben Shalom. He's stuck it to Frank, Joshua, a lot of them. Why couldn't he do that when uh, back in the day when they were riding out of Sky with Bean? Why? Because he didn't have the freedom in. He didn't have that creative control to say what he wants. And now that he has, he's basically saying what he wants. You know, he had to he had to toe the, the matchroom corporate line. You know, you, you listen to the commentary in them fights. You listen to the narrative before and after. It was all generic. Everyone was the same. They're all like like scripted robots, like like scripted cloned robots. Now that that he's not being controlled by Eddie, he can basically say what he wants. Now he wasn't criticizing Frank Warren way back when he, he he was in some of the worst ever WBO title defences in history, ever. There's some of them guys that I don't think had rankings. Uh, I remember that the time he, he won the title against Carl Thompson and Frank Warren protected him and didn't give Thompson a rematch. Now, Johnny's got the footage. And there's been a bit of it showing on Sky recently at a, at a show. But it's not on YouTube for everyone to see. And to be honest with you, that should not have been a stoppage. And Card Thompson should, Still be should have got a rematch. You know, let's not forget Card Thompson went to Germany and won that world title against Georgie Rocciani in Germany. So he'd done all the heavy lifting for, for Johnny Nelson. If 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 Carl Thompson hadn't have won that title in Germany, Johnny Nelson would have never been a world champion. Johnny never. Nelson, let me just tell you this. Johnny, I know you'd listen to this because I've heard back. I went races with Scott Brunt. He got one of them boxes at St. Ledger. And uh, on the second year I went. Johnny's lawyer come and had a chat with me. <laughs> He's all right, actually. But Johnny, I know you're watching. Let me just say this to you. And I'm just going to talk straight. You wouldn't have got a WBO shot against Carl Thompson, Johnny, if you were Nazi Mamid's driver. Because he was Nazar's driver, Johnny. used to drive him about all over the place, right? If you weren't Nazar's driver, you wouldn't have got a title shot because Naz said to Bricktop, get Johnny a WBO or I'm leaving you. And that is a true story. And Johnny, you can take that to the bank. You know about that story. All right, so come out. And tell the real story, Johnny. Tell the real one about that Mercedes we Naz as well. And how you ended up with it, Johnny. All right. I'm not going to spoil it for you. I'll give you a couple of weeks to tell that story, Johnny. 
And if not, somebody will remind me about it. But I do like Johnny Nelson now. I think he's turned over a new leaf, Kent. And he's trying to impress me and hardcore boxing fans because, let's have it right, since he started at Sky, all he's done is be a licker. He's been a licker, hasn't he, basically? A company man who, who went out there and created a bit of controversy. Everybody's going for Joshua to flatten Eric Molina. And Johnny pipes up, doesn't he, and goes, Phew, seen Eric Molina. <laughs> <laughs> good. AJ's got his work cut out. What were the other ones? <laughs> Tackham one. Tackham a 12 day replacement for Pool left, bringing him in at 12 days' notice. And Johnny actually were coming out. One is saying, 12 days' notice. Mm, it tips it, it. You know, it's getting to be an even fight here. And Tackham's like, you remember George Foreman? And you remember this one, Johnny, don't you? George Foreman. And Evander Holyfield rolled into one. We all remember, don't we, what you said, Johnny? Takam, Foreman and Holyfield roll into one and you fear for Joshua. Johnny, there were too much of that going on for years, but we're trying to buy into your bullshit at the moment, but it's a bit hard with what's gone on in the past. All right. Because your people change like chameleons. If Eddie Hills and Joshua got back in at Sky tomorrow, Johnny's narrative would change to their narrative, wouldn't it? Do we agree on that? Absolutely. It's like Bricktop. When you see Bricktop interviewed now, I've just seen Flexon say to Bricktop, Bricktop, he well, didn't call him Bricktop, but I will. He went, well, what about Joshua's chin? How would he cope against a bar? Normally, Frank Warren would have gone, he ain't got a chin, it's a chandelier. When Daniel hits him, he's going to go. But what did he say? He went, well, we're going to have to see. Everybody's sitting on the fence. It's all nice and fucking cosy, isn't it? Nobody wanting to... To upset anybody because they all want to get to the big swag, don't they? Get the money. But I think I preferred it when they were going at it because at least you know where you stood, didn't you? They all protected their fighters. Now it's like they're all as one, licking each other's assholes. Sorry, but you need insane and I'm pissed off today. <laughs> I can't help me saying, Ken, am I speaking truth here? Or am I talking shite? It's the truth. Everyone else is thinking it. We all know what we're seeing, don't we? It's like flexing. Let's have it. Let's have it right. Let's have a little look here. Eight hundred thousand subscribers. In analytics, analytics, averaging twenty six thousand. But he's eight hundred thousand subscribers. So what? What are the other seven hundred and seventy six thousand doing? See where I'm coming from. All the lot of them are cheating. Cheating. If you were a sponsor and you looked at them with all these subscribers, you said they're a good bet. But once you delve a little bit deeper and you scratch the surface, you realise that it's a load of old shite and it's all fraud. A lot of them are committing frauds, mate. In front of our eyeballs. But what can you do? It is what it is, isn't it? Uh, is Fury going to fight Usek? I'm not so sure, mate. Again. I don't know. I don't know. I think the fight was really hard on him. And the aftermath was, was even tougher, was even harder. The, the fanfare before it, the fanfare during it, the fanfare afterwards, it was an absolute disaster. And, and the disaster in every aspect. Every aspect. Would he want to go through that again? I don't know. I really don't know. Well, we're going to see, aren't we? We're going to see. But uh, do I want to see Fury Usyk? No, I don't think I do because all it would be for me is just Fury turning up out of shape to collect a paycheck. I, I, I don't want to see all that nonsense from the last time. You know, we're going to get John again. John's going to get wheeled out. There's going to be all the, the negatives, all the... Do, do you actually want to go through all... I, I actually found the build-up to the fight right. painful. Do you think, Kent, that it's possible that Fury's arsehole could fall out against the second rematch and Joshua might just be pulled out by Eddie Hills for the bar one and they're just going to put Jabbar and Usak in again, and they'll put uh, the other two in, Joshua and Fury. 
and let the winners fight, and it'd be undisputed that way because I'm looking at it and I don't think we're going to get Fury against Joshua as like the last fight, you know, the last men standing. I don't think it's, it's not going to happen. We don't peck in order them two now in, in rankings. I think there's a few could be ahead of them. I, 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 it's not about who's ahead of them as in ranking and commercially they're the two big dogs of the division regardless of what anybody says but I, I don't I think Fury is actually too proud to fight Joshua yeah and what I what I mean by that is there has been a decline in, in performance of, of Fury he can't he can't fight going backwards. He can't take a shot. His balance is gone. Well, his dad couldn't hold a shot. You know, he... Because you're big John, the big fighting man. In the ring or on the hard road. Pop, pop, bang. He doesn't doesn't seem to have the reflexes. So, and he knows this. And he's going to go in against somebody who's the only way that he's going to beat him is punch him really hard and get power shots off. Probably throwing probably between eight and 12 power shots around the land three. I think he knows that, that Josh's physicality at the moment would be too much for him. And, and I think Josh's power and physicality at the minute it, it will be too much for, for Fury. Yeah, but in my opinion, right, I think Fury and Joshua are both spent, personally. I think the paper... In Abs- the absolutely, yeah. The the punch output from Big Meech is not what it were. He don't throw as many power punches. He takes rounds off. He's un- indecisive. And then I look at Fury. Well, he, he, ba- he ba- mainly built his career on fumbling his way to a victory and loads of feints, like he did against Vladimir, didn't he? We all agree on that, don't we? Fury, before he thought Vladimir were getting dropped left, right and centre, but they all say Fury is a GOAT, and CB's not a GOAT. He's got four, four wins of a world champions. He's no, he, he needs another 12, 13, 14 wins to be up as a GOAT. He's nowhere near that, and his style, he's been on the floor eight times. He's had eight counts. This is a defensive genius. They keep telling us, Paulie Malignaggi, the guard, Frank Warren, is a defensive genie. No. He's been down eight times. What does that tell you? If he's going to get dropped every four fights, Houston, there's a problem with the beard. He's got a beard problem, hasn't he? A whiskers problem. But nobody's allowed to mention that. Why don't Puppy Parsons and Coogan, Rob Tebbit, and all these lickers, why don't they say... Tyson, you've been down as a career in your career eight times. Do you think this is a goat behavior? Greatest of all time. Been down eight times. Nobody's pulling him up on this one. He's saying, I'm a goat, I'm a goat. And his dad's there barking it all out. Well, your lad's been on floor eight times. How is he a fucking goat? Hey, he might be a goat because he can't fucking stand up. Eh! Oh, that's sheep in it, that. And, and let's not forget, one of them times was was against a guy that never had a professional fight before. Yeah, and then you look at Joshua's CB. Since Usyk done him twice, who has he beat? Franklin, won't even top 15. Then you've got Otto Wallin and Ilenius, or Hilarious. Two former spa partners. Then you've got a guy in his second ever fight as a pro. Are you telling me that's a stellar comeback since Usyk? Nothing. nothing. Oh, now he's got Daniel Dubar, another former sparring partner. It's all nice and cushy for Joshua, isn't it? They're lining them up, ex sparring partners and guys who've never boxed. All guys outside in top 15. They're having it off, aren't they? Earning millions, fighting nobodies, utter bin men. Bottom line. A brick top should be coming out and pointing all this out. But they're not because they're stuck up each other now, aren't we? So nobody really knows what to ask. Have you noticed how it's all a bit subdued when they've got Warren and Ern together or separately? Nobody really knows what to ask and answers are so fucking vague, aren't they? Have you noticed, Ken? The numbers are down massively. Massively. Massively because nobody's interested. 
Well, what controversy? That's how I look at it, mate. But what can you do? It's a load of rubbish. Do you want to go on to part two, kid? Yeah, uh, next yeah. part. Yeah, go on. Cheers. Thanks for liking and subscribing and leaving a comment. As you can see today, I don't give a flying F U C K about much. I've got that Friday feeling, and I coming on me. I always give it every Friday. So, but I hope you all enjoyed the video I did with Kent earlier that's on Pokers International YouTube. Feel free to jump over there, have a look, like and subscribe, and leave a comment. Let me let me know if I look the business on the uh, video. Right. Here we are. Part three today we can, but part two on Porky's Corner. Go on, booyaka! Max, you're not fighting this week. Unlucky Max.